I just realized it looks like I made a silencer for my compressed air system. So it's been a week. Welcome back. Um, things are not looking better. They're looking much, much worse, in fact. I, uh, I doubt anyone watching this would be silly enough to doubt the reasons for self-isolation, but in case you are, go look at the charts for Italy. They have barely bent their curve at all after instituting some very restrictive measures last week. It's still getting worse and worse there, and we are, we've barely done anything here. We're not taking it nearly as seriously as we need to be. Um, I think it's going to get a lot worse, and I am, I'm scared. I don't mind admitting that. Anyway, let's uh, get back to the project. So I have a pretty good idea how it's going to work now. Um, we've tested on this aperture and got that working pretty well. So my plan for this week is going back to the section of pipe that has the, uh, the cap here that guides the rod back and forth. Somewhere about here, I'm going to cut another aperture in the same way, and then with a quarter, quarter inch of a gap in front of it. Then I can put a chunk of steel on the inside that blocks the airflow in, in the same way that this did, uh, in the same way that that one did um, testing last week, and use some set screws to hold it in place there. And then another, um, another adapter for the airline on the end uh, with the valve and we'll see how it goes. Came out looking pretty good. I'm still really loving the uh, the roughing end mill I've been using. Um, the cuts on the sides, you know, they have the striations, but the end mill cuts are actually quite nice. Um, but I do have to change that out because next I need a gap of a quarter inch here, and this is a half inch end mill, so can't do that. There's also the question of how to do that. I can either tilt the head of the mill over to 25 degrees to match this. And the advantage to that is that it would naturally match the rotation here since I wouldn't take this out of the vise. But then I'd have to retram the mill head, and I hate doing that. So I think I am going to take this out of the vise, lay it hor set it up horizontally, and then I'll just have to uh, clock it in, set up an indicator off of here, and just make sure it's close enough to the same orientation. Okay, here's the setup. I have the uh, touch indicator here. And it can roll along back and forth, reading out that plane. That, so I need to twist this back and forth until the dial doesn't move at all. So right now, as I move towards the back, the dial, the dial is going counterclockwise up to zero, which means this tip is dropping down which means this backside is farther down than I want. So I want to rotate this whole bit this way, just a little bit. And I'll just keep going back and forth until, well, until I'm satisfied, which will be as little motion as possible, really. <laughs> Let's uh, get, I'm just moving the Z height up and down now to get the dial in a nice known location. Technically not necessary, but it's just always easier to see how much motion you see when you know you came from a specific part on the dial and the bottom's the easiest. Anyway, so now if I move Y across, the needle's wiggling a little bit, but basically no real motion at all. So it's within, I'd say, at least two ten thousandths of an inch, which is so much better than this needs to be. So let's get that slot cut. <laughs> Okay, 
So I started too far in this direction because at the end I want the flat that this is going to cut to line up exactly with the bottom of this angle. And that's kind of a hard thing to calculate so I'm just going to wing it. So now that I'm down deep enough I can start to see how much farther over I have to come. So I'll move myself over about, I don't know, 50 thou or so uh, this way, come back down again, and then just kind of inch up onto it because I don't want this, the, the, I don't want the spacing at the end being any wider than the quarter inch that this is. So kind of got to get it just right and sneaking up on it is, I think, the best way to go. <laughs> Yep, getting really close now. Time to just take it, time to be really cautious and patient. And just work it down until there isn't that, that lip there. I don't know if you can see that, but my finger nail can certainly feel it. So let's do that. Getting very close. I think I'll, I'm going to move it over just a little bit further this way, I think. Time to start locking the table, too. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Might have overshot it slightly, but uh, I think I'm going to call that good enough. Uh, time to take this out, clean it up with a bit of a file, and have a closer look. Yeah, not bad. I, uh, I can live with this. So now that that's there, I still need the bit inside that blocks off the air except at the top. So it channels all the air up into the top where it then cuts across this lip and starts, you know, vibrating. So actually what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this, stick it in the mill, and just remove all this top section. It served its role as a prototype and 
Even if I made a new one on the lathe, I'd still have to put it on the mill to cut the flat, so might as well just use this. Luckily this already had the flat on it, so it will be held in here nice pretty easily. And back on the roughing end of mill, which means I should have sequenced this better, but uh, whatever. I really like this thing. That was so easy. go got the uh, 832 set screw in there because I had some and that's now then holding hmm. you can't see that and you can just see in there now the uh, the baffle is there in place held in pretty tight if I sight down along the tube I can see some gaps around the lower edge um, I don't know if that'll be a problem if that'll mean too much air getting lost down there if so I can I mean, if need be, I could just gum up that lower bit with, uh, I don't know, silly putty or something. But uh, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Let's set this up. Okay, um, I've got the temporary um, blower that I made last week just taped on because um, I don't have an adapter yet for this. Uh, and for the record, it is, what I'm about to do is loud enough that I've got hearing protection on now. Not bad. Here, let me set you up and I'll play the side on it a little bit. So there's definitely a sweet range where the, the piston is um, sort of in this section, I think. But uh, yeah. Not bad. Yeah, that's where we are now. It works. I need to make the new adapter to weld on to the real whistle, but uh, it's coming along. I think that's all I'm going to do this week. I have to be honest with you, it's really hard to find the uh, concentration to do anything other than just kind of stare at Twitter. So I am hoping to start doing twice weekly updates. So maybe around Friday, I'll post a follow up to this. I think for the duration, I'm going to try doing twice weekly just to give me something to do, a reason to get out here and do anything other than, as before said, just watch Twitter and despair. That's not the best use of time in any situation. Um, yeah, so I'll see you then and stay safe, everyone.